are moments away from your entertainment experience. Church news! I didn't didn't realize acting was this hard. (laughs) This is Wretched Radio. Hoping that you enjoy church. You okay, Todd? Are you sure? I'm fine. Let, really. it, let it out. We're here. I was wrong. Oh. I don't need to Fonzie that one. I was just flat out wrong. It couldn't be more obvious if it were a button hook in the well water. Recently, I claimed the crown of the worst alliterator ever. That's right. In writing a book, a chapter on why did God create intimacy? I tried to alliterate it because, well, it seemed to be a good idea at the time. And overall, the first three I thought were quite good. The fourth one was a radical stretch. Therefore, I concluded I don't see anybody else even wanting to claim the crown of worst alliterator. But then I was watching a compilation video of Phil Johnson and John MacArthur. Funny moments. And they are indeed funny moments. But when I bumped into this snippet, I realized it's time to take the bad alliterator crown off of my head and place it squarely on the noggin of John MacArthur. And you said uh, you rarely spend five minutes making an outline. And can I just say, sometimes it shows. <laughs> what you're about to hear are two men who have co labored together for decades. Their relationship is deep. John MacArthur, not offended. I'm looking at the smirk on his face. He just is looking at Phil quizzically, but not angrily because he's not offended. Besides, frankly, it turns out he really deserved it. But. You can say that. You, yeah. You no, can in fact, say that. well, job security. Yeah, no, in fact, my favorite, you, you did a sermon once from Matthew 27 on the miracles that occurred during the crucifixion, um, and, and you, had, you had doubly alliterated every point. There were like six or seven points. I forget how many miracles there were, but I do remember your outline, because it had to do with the tearing of the curtain in the tabernacle, and you called that sanctuary desecration... And then there was the supernatural darkness. And when you got to the earthquake, you called it soil disturbance. (laughs) Oh, oh, and I thought my alliteration was spectacularly terrible. Dr. John MacArthur, his grin couldn't be broader, smiling at himself. At the moment, not offended or annoyed or perturbed. How dare he bring that up and make fun of it? It would appear their relationship is deep enough and they're mature enough to do a little give and take. (laughs) Well, yeah. yeah. (laughs) That was the best I could do with an SD for an earthquake. But no, no, you could have said. You know, I, I have to say the Lord has forgiven me for that. <laughs> no, 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 He hasn't because <laughs> who, whoever edited that part of your commentary left it in there. If you if you look at the Matthew commentary on that passage, it's right there. Soil disturbance. I'm, uh, going... I, I'm the only one who edits the commentary. Okay. But you know, that's a very. You could only think of that one illustration because that's a very you no, know I, I used to try on. to I know I know you could. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to do that but I, but it only takes me like I, it just comes quick 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 and eventually I thought you know this I don't want people getting caught up in it, it helps in a commentary right because you're breaking sections out but if you guys use that make it seismic disturbance or something I, anyway yeah well why didn't I think of that see <laughs> 
<laughs> because he's the bad alliterator king. And therefore, it stays in the commentary set. Let's keep tackling church news, shall we? It's nice to hear brothers laugh, isn't it? Could use a lot more of that. Have you have you been laughing as much today as you did three years ago? Do you have as much joy now as you did 36 months ago? Do you have... Uh oh, I'm in trouble here, Jimmy. 365, that would be 730, 795. Are you as hopeful as you were 1,095 days ago? I wonder if you are. I wonder if I am, honestly, was having dinner with Mrs. Friel. And it dawned on me, I think that I, I'm less quick to just be happy. Uh, less less quick to just smile or to engage somebody and make a crack about something, try to lighten up a situation. I, I've noticed that is not as ready as it once was. And I can't help but conclude if that's true, it is external pressures that are causing that. And I need to go work on my heart and fight for joy and not let all of the bad news that the world is producing get me down. I, uh, no, that's why I won't back down. Okay, I need a better theologian than Tom Petty. The point is, we've got to fight for our right to have joy. That's much better musical quote right there. That's good. Beastie Boys, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I wonder if they're still touring. Do you think maybe that they are, and they've reconsidered just how they present themselves now that they're pushing 60. I'm just wondering if that's the case. Let me go back to a church news, specifically a non-church news story. Friel, which one is it? It's kind of both. There's a congregation that has decided that we're not going to do physical church anymore. We're just going to sell the place and do virtual church. After seeing a decline in donations due to COVID, hmm, that's interesting, donations for a lot of churches and ministries went up during COVID. Echoing the words that rattle around in my brain from Phil Johnson, huh, how providential is that, from years ago when he said, God's people are very generous. And that is true. God's people are. Goats aren't, but God's people are. And for a lot of churches that stayed biblical, that tried to be loving and truthful during COVID, CRT, elections, they actually grew and received more giving. This one apparently didn't in Denver. And so they decided we're selling the building and moving church permanently online. No no, you're not, because church isn't online. Was thinking about the whole virtual situation and imagining if I could ever be lured into going there. You put on the goggles, and then you have some sort of an immersive experience, which is really what people are after. How do I know? Because we have, is it Comcast at home? Whatever our cable thing is at home. Uh, no, AT and we've got ourselves a cable system at home. And they sent us a new box. We've been with it so long. They finally sent us something that you didn't have to wind on the side to operate. So I take the thing out. I put the new thing in. And what do you know? It doesn't work. It just stays on all the time. And it gets blazing hot. So I have to unplug it. If we want to watch cable TV, plug it back in. And I wait for it to reboot where it says, You're moments away from your entertainment experience. I, I thought I was just going to watch the game, but okay, it's an entertainment experience. That's what virtual reality seeks to do. It brings you into a sense that you're actually experiencing something, but you're not. So I thought, okay, uh, let's just say, would there be any place I'd like to go? Anything I'd like to see? All right, Tuscany. That, that, that might be the most beautiful postage stamp piece of land anywhere. Would I want to put on goggles to go to Siena or San Gimignano? 
And the answer is probably not because I can't smell the pizza. I, I, I can't, I can't see the actual people. I'm just seeing pixel pixels. It's just not real. And while I think there's plenty of concerns with virtual reality, not to overlook the rewiring of the brain and the effects that it'll have further on people's rewiring, but it's just, I don't have to go there. If you're worried about it, don't go. If, if, you're, if your iPhone is a big temptation for you, get a flip phone. We don't have to. This is nothing more in my estimate. Now, I know there's implications of this. I get it. Job, economy, all of that. I really do. But if you're personally concerned, oh, no. Or my kids, oh, no. It's just as simple as Nancy Reagan. Just say no. This is Wretched Radio. If you are a fan of the show, you can watch the entire daily broadcast of Wretched Radio at wretched.org. Good evening, my fellow totally depraved Americans. <laughs> 